Efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. That seems to be all that we're talking about these days, isn't it? Well, it really plays a lot to do with how the HVAC and refrigeration industry is shifting into new energy requirements. We have new codes and regulations, a lot of changes with our equipment, and along with that comes a lot of monitoring and verification. So last week, if you didn't join us, we had a really good episode where we were talking about you know, blower door testing and looking at things that are expectations in the industry that are now turning into codes and requirements. And we're starting to see more of that in our equipment. And when we talk about blower assemblies, now we start talking about air movement and efficiencies of drive assemblies. In the past, we've had a lot of, uh, you know, PSC motors, and we've started drifting now more into more ECM variable speed technology. So our blower capabilities are actually having wider parameters that they're functioning in. So we have to pay a lot more attention to how efficient our fan assemblies are. Now, what happens when we have um, when we have specifications that are generated through simulation gets put into specifications for a piece of equipment, is there any way to actually verify and validate that that is the performance? Because sometimes we have to have, remember, third-party verification that something is actually functioning properly. Well, that's when we start getting into third-party testing. And our good friends over at AMCA International is going to join us today and dive a little bit of deeper into some of these things that we have seen as changes. Some of you may be familiar with things like FER, fan efficiency rating, things that we're seeing in the residential application for blower assemblies and furnaces that are putting requirements and verification on fan assemblies in our residential equipment. A lot of that comes from some of our expectations in the commercial and industrial side of things. So if you've been more in the commercial industrial, you're going to be very familiar with things like fan efficiency grade and things like our fan electrical input power. And here in the near future, we're going to start lumping a lot of that together. You're going to see some regulations that are going to create a new index called Fan Energy Index. Now, we're not going to focus on a lot of that today. We'll have a separate program with our friends from AMCA in the future where we dive really deep into what that looks like from codes and requirements. We want to help you understand how this has come about, how it's changing the industry, and who is there to monitor these things and validate that things are actually performing the way that they are. So that being said, thank you so much, Charlie Myers from AMCA for being with us today. And um, we want to let people know a little bit more about AMCA and uh, got a really cool video that they have I'm um, will share with you all. So take just a systems second and Let's more. Check this out. These precision systems demand that the equipment behind them operate as expected, ensuring that systems do the job they're intended to do. How can building owners get this assurance? Through the Air Movement and Control Association International, or AMCA, a not-for-profit association dedicated to the health, growth, and integrity of the air movement and control industry. You need to know that the equipment you specify or buy performs as reported by its manufacturers. That's why AMCA created its Certified Ratings Program, which requires that participants' product be tested to approve standards at an accredited facility to prove their performance data is accurate. AMCA was founded in the United States in 1917 with 11 initial member companies. Over 100 years Today, ago. nearly 100 years later, AMCA has more than 360 member companies worldwide. Its Certified Ratings Program has more than 240 participating companies with over 3,400 products and a growing network of state-of-the-art laboratories in the U.S., Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. AMCA also serves the industry by offering a library of more than a dozen free white papers and hosting engineering seminars annually in Asia, the Middle East, and the United States. The white papers and seminars cover topics such as fire and smoke control, energy efficiency, acoustics, fan system design, and dampers and louver sizing and specification. And AMCA maintains a library of 19 ANSI accredited testing standards, written and vetted by the foremost experts in the air movement and control industry. AMCA standards are continually revised to accommodate changing technologies, regulations, and best practices. 
AMCA is a pivotal voice of advocacy for safety and energy efficiency in regulatory initiatives. Working closely with ASHRAE, the International Standards Organization, the National Fire Protection Association, as well as government agencies such as the United States Department of Energy and the European Commission. Learn more about AMCA's testing, certification, advocacy, and educational capabilities at amca.org by clicking on the Resources tab. Together, we can ensure the health and integrity of the air system industry and keep building safe and energy efficient. Very cool stuff. All right. That being said, Charlie, thank you so much. And I'm going to hand it over to you and let's dive a little bit deeper into what's going on at AMCA and how our industry is moving forward in fan verifications and regulations. All right. Well, thank you, Clifton. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to your audience. Uh, my name is Charlie Myers. I'm the Certified Ratings Program Manager here at AMCA. Before we dive into this, uh, I know the video touched on it a little bit, but I want to get into some of what we do here at AMCA. As the mm -hmm. video mentioned, we're a not-for-profit manufacturing association. Uh, we were established in 1917. Uh, we had six member companies in the U.S. We've now grown into an international organization with almost 400 companies. Uh, we're at 389 currently. Oh, wow. Nice. Uh, we are an ANSI accredited standard development organization. In the, in the video, I mentioned those 17 standards that right. we developed. That's uh, We are accredited and we maintain those standards and those are developed by industry leaders, by our members with input from the industry and regulatory bodies as well. Excellent. Our, our certified ratings program is accredited to ISO 17065. Um, mm -hmm to maintain the impartiality of the work that we do here. That way the general public and anybody who utilizes and relies on our certified ratings program has the confidence that we are operating as an independent body and that we're not influenced by any outside factors. Awesome. So you're a third party company working with the manufacturers for validation. Yes. Awesome. Now, we do have a global reach, but a local touch. Uh, this is just mm -hmm. a quick breakdown of where our members are located. Uh, we are um, almost caught up or there was a point in time where we had more members in Asia than we did in North America. Oh, but wow. where we are heavily focused in those two areas, areas mm -hmm. of growth, um, just as with the building industry, Middle East is a very hot market right now. So we're starting sure. to see a lot of members um, focus in on, in that region, along with regulatory bodies, and there's a lot of interest on energy efficiency and then just the program as a whole over in the Gulf region. Nice. So, so our members, they produce many different products. Um, some of them commercial HVAC, um, mm -hmm. there's industrial processes, um, parking garages, tunnels, car parks, power plants, um, and heavy, heavy industrial applications. Sure. But some of them also produce things as simple as, you know, a residential bath van, uh, where we support them for their Air Energy Star compliance. Oh, okay. I, mean, I can see where that comes into play, for sure. Now, to reiterate the AM Commission, our mission is to advance the knowledge of air systems and uphold industry integrity on behalf of AMCA members worldwide. This is done through three tenets. One, um, the part that I'm heavily involved in on the certification side. Uh, okay. Advocate, um, where we operate through our advocacy department to help develop standards similar, uh, such as FEI, and right. to build up that, you know, the path forward for the industry as a whole. And then we have our education aspect of, of the association where we get out, we educate the general public just as I am today to sure. inform them of what's going on in the industry. What's and, changing. And what's changing, exactly that. Absolutely. Which is why we're here today, to see how things are starting to change and be aware of changes as they're coming to the industry before they're actually sitting in our lap and we're going, well, when did that happen? I know. We're trying to be very proactive and getting the education out before it is, you know, hitting the ground. Mm -hmm. And that's it's a big focus of our members knowing the what regulations may be required and 
not being aware of what's going on and the timelines that are associated with these things sure. put them at a disadvantage. So they not only want to meet the requirements of those regulations, but they also want to educate the public to make sure that while they're going through these efforts that their end users, the engineers that are specifying the products, the installers, the techs that are working on them, that they know what's going on and what to expect as they're dealing with these and updating their products and their, their catalogs and making everybody aware of what to expect in the near future. Yeah, definitely. So with that, I will also queue up a quick video that kind of goes into the certified ratings program and in a little bit more detail. Okay. Building owners need to know that their air systems will perform day in, day out for the life of the product. Air system products that are not certified have a greater chance of not being the correct type or size, which can increase service and energy costs and lead to premature replacement. That's why the Air Movement and Control Association International created its Certified Ratings Program. The AMCA Certified Ratings Program tests products to approve standards at accredited AMCA laboratories, ensuring their performance data is accurate. AMCA validates manufacturers' catalogs to ensure accuracy and maintains a searchable database of licensed products on its public website, enabling fast, 24-7 verification of certification claims. Furthermore, all certified product lines undergo periodic check tests in AMCA laboratories to ensure they continue to have accurate ratings. To participate in the certified ratings program, manufacturers must sign a license agreement, allow AMCA to test their products, and submit their catalogs to AMCA staff for review. AMCA reviews manufacturers' catalogs to ensure that published performance data, calculations, and presentation formats conform to rigid requirements. AMCA also ensures that manufacturers' use of the AMCA CRP seal meets program requirements. Manufacturers' claims that products tested to AMCA standards do not imply the product was certified. Products and or catalogs must present the licensed AMCA seal to be represented in the online AMCA database. Although it is optional to apply an AMCA seal to a certified product shipped to a customer, the product listing an associated catalog must be present on the AMCA online database. The Certified Ratings Program is now in its 75th year and oh, wow. continues to expand throughout the world. More than 3,400 products are AMCA certified, with more than 240 companies participating in the program, spanning 27 countries. The AMCA Certified Ratings Program is supported by 16 ANSI accredited testing and calculation standards and AMCA accredited independent testing laboratories in the US, Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. Don't put your faith in unverified performance. Specify AMCA certified products and ensure they are actually purchased and installed. For more detailed information about the AMCA certified ratings program, visit www.amca.org forward slash certified or download instructional technical information at www.amca.org forward slash white papers. All right, very cool. Excellent. Yeah, so that's a brief snapshot into the program, and I'll dive into a bit more detail um, sure. throughout the webcast here. So a brief, some examples, um, you saw them in the video, but these are um, the seals that you will see on certified products. Um, you'll see them on a full range of products. The numbers that you saw in the video, they're a little outdated. Um, right now, we are currently at around 4,200 um, mm -hmm. product lines that are certified by AMCO. Nice. Uh, as also mentioned in there, the sizing selection software um, is a service that we provide as part of the program. We will certify those selection softwares to ensure that even though there's certain products that you know you can configure to meet the project needs mm -hmm. we will certify the data that's presented through those catalogs okay our directory is made available publicly um that way you can verify information on there at any time at amca.org forward slash certify and there was a mention in the video but this is something that i always like to bring up is be very careful when you're looking at projects at specifications and submittals be wary of the word 
tested in accordance to. Oh, okay. That, that, that may be passed off or let people consider that a product is not is certified when in reality it is not. Okay. The only thing that that statement says is that product was actually tested, but there's no continued surveillance on that product. Well, that may be good on a true one-off where that unit that you are receiving is the one that was tested. Mm -hmm. Any continued production of that product, nobody will be able to verify those claims. Right. What yeah. if a blade pitch changes? What if a motor changes? What if a capacitor changes? There's a variety of options that could affect the performance of a system. I get that. Perfect. So yeah, you always want to be on the lookout for statements such as certified by or licensed to bear the AMCA certified ratings program seal. Okay. Some of the products that we certify, we do serve uh, the air movement and air control industry. So many different types of fans and products are associated with air movement, but we also work in the air control side. So dampers, louvers, things of that nature. Yeah, I was really curious. Um, I was doing a little bit of research on some of the extreme duty louvers that we have that came about by, you know, of course, hurricane damage where, you know, we previously we were using types of louvers that um, really weren't looked at for, you know, how um, destruction resistant they were. And so AMCA has been able to do, you know, third party validation of the resistance of these to damage. So not just airflow, all of the components that go along with airflow as well. So there's a lot more components that go into that air distribution system than just a, a fan or a blower itself. Absolutely. Yeah. With, you know, recent events, you know, hurricanes are on the mind of a lot of people right. and we we do high velocity wind driven rain as mm -hmm. well as impact testing here um to we have standards nice. amca 540 and Am amca 550 that you know try to simulate um a hurricane and you know hopefully you know we want the products to stand up that way it is accepted in the state of florida sure. a lot of the gulf coast states are implementing what's in what's required by the state of Florida that you're going to right. start seeing that especially around like the Houston area Louisiana all of the areas that Gulf are starting areas to be, particularly yeah yeah starting to be impacted by you know extreme weather events so it, it's something that the overall industry even outside of you know the historically impacted state of Florida it's going to be spreading here shortly I would imagine yeah, and that's what's interesting to see how, you know, there are some codes that are national and international codes, but we do have local codes that are requiring higher standards than other applications. And that's really the, the, the purpose of doing this, is to be able to understand how the codes are affecting our installations and our requirements and, uh, you know, our responsibility for the products that we're installing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Miami Dade's a very good example of that, where they call out that they're essentially the tip of the spear. If you look at mm -hmm. the state of Florida, and a lot of times they're the one that's going to bear the brunt of the storm as it makes landfall. And so they, they've they taken it upon themselves to require a higher standard of uh, sure. what's being installed in their buildings. Absolutely. So certification and compliance, why does it matter? Um, this has been a long journey to get towards regulatory requirements. Um, over the past, well, over a decade, um, this has been in the works from DOE mm -hmm. and has started and stopped and now started up again. Uh, while that was going on, AMCA took the lead to create um, what we're going to be presenting on in a later webcast, the Fan Energy Index. And that's right. derived from the Fan Energy Grade. Um, how I was looked at and saw that, you know, there were some things missing within the Fan Energy Grade to capture the full system, be it the power through the transmission loss and everything from wire, essentially from wire to air and sure. everything in between to make sure that that's accounted for. Yeah. As that, as FEI is created and we issued AMCA 208, that has been adopted in certain areas. So whether it's ASHRAE 90.1, it being incorporated into the IECC, the IGCC, mm -hmm. 
those areas we've started to see some adoption in, in those fronts. However, we're starting to see this from a regulation standpoint starting to be adopted. And these are through two areas, um, mainly California Energy Commission. Sure. They are very, very close to incorporating this. Um, I would say about two weeks from today, right? Um, they are going to be issuing their final ruling with an, a filing deadline for manufacturers as of November 1st of 2023. Um, the DOE is working, uh, still working on their test procedure. Um, don't necessarily have a date, but they are rapidly trying to work through um, implementing energy efficiency into commercial industrial fans. Exactly. With this, products must be submitted with performance data and approved by these regulatory bodies before being sold. So okay. with that, participating in CRP provides recent test data from an independent test lab. Third party if, testing. Yeah. And if you if a manufacturer doesn't necessarily participate in that program, they may be relying on test data that's very, very old. Sure. So in order to meet compliance, there's there's increased scrutiny on that data given the amount of time that's passed since it was actually tested. So okay. Participating in a program that has continued mo monitoring makes things a bit more attractive, a bit more palatable for the regulatory body. Yeah, especially if you're on the you know the backside of the compliance, you're the contractor installing the product, and you're liable for the performance of that product. Mm -hmm. uh, that is going to be very important for it. Yep, absolutely. Now, who can participate in AMCA CRP? Right. Anybody that produces a product within the scope of what we certify. So we operate, again, as an, a trade association mm -hmm. uh, comprised of manufacturers primarily. Um, this is offered to members, but as part of our ISO 17065 accreditation, mm -hmm. we have to offer this to non-members. So there, okay. is, there is no club in, in here. It is anybody who produces the product is more than welcome to participate in the program. It's nice. You know, as long as they meet the program requirements. Sure. Now, benefits of participating in the program is, you know, almost as a value, just so people are aware of how, why a manufacturer would want to participate. It provides, you know, a differentiation based off quality, acceptance, and perception. Having a product that is continually monitored shows that you are willing to stand behind your product and have it scrutinized by an independent third party plays an active role in monitoring product performance. Having somebody okay. go in and check and make sure that you're producing the product the same way that you right. were expected to be produced. It just Independent quality good. control. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So specifications, we are starting to see, uh, you know, with, again, with the adoption in IECC and IGCC, right. um, it's, you know, it's starting to be adopted and it's starting to be called out by specifiers. Mm -hmm. and they're looking for you know, AMCA certified products. Right. They not participating is, you know, it's, you know, it's non-qualifier. There's no point in even submitting a bid. Gotcha. And then lastly, SEALs provide, you know, a known independent third party. And that's a good thing for techs and installers to see out in the field, to know that what's out there is part of the program. Something that we are implementing in a soon to be published update to our operating procedure is the incorporation of QR codes oh, okay. where anybody can go and scan a QR code and it'll take you to the AMCA certified product directory. And For that particular product. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, Very cool. And we are also incorporating that into product catalog. So if you're reviewing a, a spec sheet and you want to pull up our reference in, right. a, in our directory, you'll be able to do that as well. Oh, very nice. So a brief overview of how to get into the program. First thing is we have to test your products. Mm -hmm. um, pretty self-explanatory, we need to determine what your performance data is um, and see where you fall. Once we have that data, you can go ahead and apply for the program. 
We'll review your information, we'll certify it, and then we will go through what's known as the check test process. And I'll discuss that here in a little bit where we do ongoing testing on the product to make sure that the one version that we tested is going to perform the same as future versions of that product. Sure. So I'm a contractor and I'm looking at a product and say I've got a multifamily or I have a you know, larger product that I need to validate that all of these are going to perform exactly the same way. Say I've got 100 products coming in and I want to make sure that when this goes through a final inspection, I'm not going back to literature going, well, the literature tells me it's supposed to. And mm -hmm. now I've got someone reviewing it going, well, where's your third party documentation of how this thing is actually performed in real world scenarios? Exactly. So that's where that comes into play. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So diving in a little bit more into the test program, we mm -hmm. will, um, depending on the type of product and performance of interest, um, we do offer certification to various um, performance ratings. So yeah, air performance, sound, um, certain types of fans have different areas, um, FEI as well. So depending on the area of interest, we will test fan for air performance, that's typically AMCA 210. For sound, that's AMCA 300. For the air control products, um, we have our AMCA 500s for dampers, 500D, and for louvers, 500L. Each one of those, depending on the type of product, will call out a test figure, and we will test according to that test figure. To the manufacturer specifications. Okay. Yep. Now, as we are an independent lab, uh, as an international body, excuse me, mm -hmm. we do work with independent labs, and those labs are scattered throughout the world. Um, the reason why is manufacturing occurs all over the world. Sure, and we want to make sure that those members that once you have a local lab available to them where they can witness testing or be, you know, not incur shipping costs mm -hmm. um, that would have happened if you were to ship your products here to the U.S., that you can work with somebody that's a little bit more local, same time zone, things like that. So we've partnered with various independent labs throughout the US, Europe, Middle East, and Asia. Um, we do have our own Asia AMCA affiliate um, based out of Malaysia. Johor, Malaysia, right on the mm -hmm. Malaysia-Singapore border. Um, that primarily supports our Asian clients. Oh, okay. We are actively looking to expand our independent lab um, group and we will be partnering here with some more labs here, hopefully in the near future. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Once product has been tested, again, you can go in and apply for certification. There is an application form. The form itself ties the product to the testing that supports certification. So it's just dotting your I's, crossing your T's, making mm -hmm. sure that everything's put together um, before you submit your product for review additional information that is requested um want to make sure that everything is being presented as it was tested so we will document the product type the product size dimensions drawings make sure that everything matches up and that there are no um nothing that's out there that doesn't align with what we've actually tested because we can you. only certify what we've what's approved within the program requirements okay so as we get to gather all that data the last step before we grant certification is we review the product catalog those product catalogs come in two different forms whether it's a PDF or, or what we refer to as a print copy, you know, mm -hmm. your spec sheets that are printed off that carry all the performance data, or we approve the electronic software selection systems that you may be familiar with from certain manufacturers. Sure. We, we certify both types of catalogs where we check for two things. We check for format where certain statements are required to make sure that the general public is aware of the testing conditions and how this product was actually tested. In addition to that, the the obvious data to make sure that the data that's in the catalog matches what we tested. Make sure that you know somebody didn't fat finger a you know a you know yeah. 
threes and eight. Or yeah, threes and yeah. eight or anything mm-hmm. like that. Make sure that you know everything lines up and that there's no misconstruction. Mis- things aren't messed up there. So sure. Along the lines of the required statements, we want to make sure that we document the installation setup, whether or not it's a ducted inlet or a ducted outlet. Um, any appurtenances that were used in testing, whether it's an inlet bell, things like that, that may have impacted the, the performance total performance. Of the product. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, nominal speed, um, depending on how the product is being cataloged. For fans that are belt driven, we want to make sure that they are aware that transmission losses are not calculated. We generally catalog off of no transmission loss. So we want to make sure that people are aware that there will be some performance loss due Absolutely. to the, belt, loose belt slippage, variety of different potential things there. Absolutely. So all the required statements, and we will absolutely make this available to the public, um, are publications. We refer to them as the 11s around here. So our Pub Mm -hmm. 11 covers are the overall program, and the 211, 311, 511 cover various aspects of air control and air movement products. Oh, okay. A brief script... uh, screenshot of our directory um, where you can search by different product types or license types as you can see on that screenshot you can also search by company name um, models things like that that way if you are an interested party want to make sure that you are utilizing an amco certified fan or damper or louver you can search by that particular product But at the same time, if you're out in the field and you want to verify, you already know the name, who the manufacturer is, what the model name is, you can go in, you can type in that information, and you're able to pull up that particular model and Mm -hmm. verify that it does participate in the program. And you can also verify the data that we last approved. Very nice. Now, is there a mobile app for any of that? Yes, we do have a mobile app. Okay, so I was thinking that there was a mobile application so you can do field verification for that. Yep, absolutely. And again, we are looking towards implementing the QR codes on our end where, you know, you can just go in. You don't even have to putz around with an app or anything. You just go in, you pull up your camera, you take a photo. It's one of the... The pandemic is really, you know, QR codes have been around for a while, but Did with the utilize. pandemic, it's it's really kind of picked up steam again. So we're looking sure. forward to actually having that implemented and it'll help, you know, help specifiers and help end users determine whether or not products are actually in the program. Okay. So the last step in, you know, maintaining certification is done through our check test process uh, where after a product is certified we will call product for testing at a particular frequency so for anything that is not out in the market or it's referred to as Mm -hmm. pre-production r&d sample we will call once it's certified we'll call testing within another within one year 12 months okay if a product has been produced uh is already out in the market and is being sold but is now being enrolled in the program we will call the next check test within a three-year period where the product will be sent in to our lab where we will call out the particular test speed and the particular size that product will be tested based off of their catalog data and the expectation is that the product will perform within the tolerances allowed within the program so sure. i'll use okay. fans for air performance it's either plus or minus five percent of the cfm that's moved through the product. So it could be, you know, a big range or it could be a very, very tiny, small range depending on the size of the fan and the type of fan it is. So okay. um, there are other tolerances that are built into the program. Our, our Pub 11, our Pub 211, Pub 311 goes into greater detail on sure. those for air performance and for sound. It's all about validating the specifications for it. Absolutely. Now, as products participate in the program, if there is continued validated performance of the catalog data, we will allow products to go a longer period without a check test because 
because we have that repeat repeatability mm -hmm. of the product performing as expected. So after the third consecutive pass, we will move it to a five-year period. After the fourth consecutive pass, we'll move it to an 84, and it stays at 84 um, after that 84 months, so seven years. Sure. Okay. Now, not as much as I would hope it would, everybody would, not everybody passes their check test. And participants have three options. Uh, sometimes things happen in shipping. Um, things don't always work out the way they thought it would, or it was it left, you know, in a configuration that um, not what they expected. So we can send the product back for inspection. They'll inspect it, send it back to us for retesting. Some participants will take the the data from our check test and recatalog based off of that data, recognizing that the data has... Something has changed mechanically with it. Some kind of component has changed that's not replaceable, so we just have to re-adjust validation. Absolutely. Okay. And the third option is they can withdraw from the program and they no longer claim sure. certification. Uh, if that happens, we, get, we have to retest within 12 months to make sure that product is now performing as stated um, in their product catalog and those previous you know grace extended periods those have gone away so let's say somebody was on their fifth consecutive pass and then failed after that they then have to start back at square one where we will go and you know after the 12 months that they pass that one then they go back to the three-year cycle okay makes sense within the program um suspensions if a member does not follow the program um, program requirements if they fail to send a product in for testing they fail to correct their product catalogs after a failed check test or failure to submit a mandatory recatalog so going to the example I mentioned before where we send a product in uh, or we send a product back for inspection and they send it back in for retesting if they fail testing they they are required to recatalog their data based off of, based off of that test data. Um, if they fail to submit the data for that recatalog, the mandatory recatalog, um, they will be suspended. And if they don't meet the suspension or get it done within the suspension time frame, they will be withdrawn from the program. So our program is built to have some teeth behind it and make sure that it's not necessarily you know a paper tiger where something it looks good on paper there you know there's some enforcement behind our rules sure so that's where some of this comes into play where i had to do a little bit of um, understanding myself so a lot of our product matchups so when we're building a fan assembly a lot of it is built by simulation it's not done by physical verification so we're using simulation software at manufacturers and by design it should function this way so you know acceptable data is inputted into it and so now we're using a third-party verification to be able to go back through that data and verify that it is truly producing what it's supposed to so we're not the the contractor the technician out in the field going okay this is supposed to be moving this much air at mm -hmm. this static pressure but i'm not seeing that so what's happened uh mm -hmm. is it an equip is it a product is it an installation um, so this is where we actually get our independent verification of how the component is truly functioning. Yep, absolutely, 100% right. And we'll we'll touch on some some of that later on um, in the presentation. I mean, it's everybody goes to the component itself. Mm -hmm. the, the entire system needs to needs a review. Uh, you know, if expectations of the of the system is not meeting a tenant's requirements. It, it's not always all oh, the fans acting up. It right. may be something within the duct. There's there's a whole slew of issues that may be may be the cause of it. And so it's always something to consider when when doing an entire system to utilize those components because it does that are part of the certification program because it does give you the extra assurances. No, okay, at least it's not necessarily the fan right off the bat like. It's just at least some level of confidence in the sure. product that you that you've purchased. Excellent. So moving on to some of the violations that we see in the program. Mm -hmm. uh, 
sometimes we occasionally see seals applied to non-certified products. That's oh, really? why we always encourage um, end users to go to our directory to validate whether or not a product is um, in the program. Um, it's a quick way and it's the one single source of truth that will tell you whether or not a program, uh, that product is part of the certified ratings program. Okay. Sometimes certification is expanded without us knowing. Let's say a manufacturer is building an axial fan um, and they either go up or down in size. Um, mm -hmm. from the page that we certified, they come out with a new size. Um, that we need to validate that particular addition um, into the program and there's some steps behind that. But sometimes they get marketing or other folks get a little bit ahead of themselves and that's something that's considered a violation of the program. Uh, also, performance. Uh, if a manufacturer claims air and sound certification when they're only certified for air, um, that's uh, considered to be a violation. Anything that is not verified by AMCO. Um, louvers run into this too where they may claim a certification to water penetration or wind driven rain when they're only certified yeah. to air performance. Oh, okay. Another one that we see is the use of our AMCO lo a member logo um, next to performance ratings. Uh, as mentioned in the video, only the, only the AMCO seal is allowed next to performance data because you can be a member of AMCA without participating in the certified ratings program. So mm -hmm. we're very, very strict about what AMCO mark or seal or logo is placed next to data. That way there's no confusion on whether or not we've actually approved this data. Sure, makes sense. And then Publish non-approved catalogs. Again, sometimes the marketing department, they want to get stuff out very quickly. Sure. So they'll go. They won't necessarily. We typically deal with engineers uh, within organizations where they send off the, the data. Marketing may say, oh, well, we want to go and, you know, update our graphics, our branding, things like that. And we don't mm -hmm. necessarily see those. The concern there is an end user may be seeing a catalog that is not on the AMCA directory. Sure. And that causes issues. And it could be something as simple as a cosmetic update, as I mentioned, rebranding. No performance data has changed. But when you start seeing that there's a difference between what's approved and what's not approved, things start coming into question. Okay. So we want to make sure that we have the most current version. Yeah, the most up-to-date. Yeah. Absolutely. So jumping into, and I mentioned this before, installation impacts products. And this is something that we really like to touch on here at AMCA to make sure that people are aware of, you know, what might happen within a particular system when it's beyond what the fan can do. Sure. Um, by that, what I mean is if a tenant is having issues with the system, we need to look at the entire system rather than the fan itself. And some of this may not even be the fan or the text fault. It may simply just be the design and how the build, how the system was put in by the mechanical engineer at the initiation of the project. So design phase problems where you start running into severe system effect and that becoming a major issue incorrect sizing and selection where mm -hmm. simply you know they chose the wrong fan for the job yeah for um, this particular project yeah. or hey they're out of stock on this particular model i grabbed one that was close enough we put it into this project now it's not performing uh what happened where did it go wrong yep it can it can happen not only from the engineer perspective it can happen from a contractor perspective where contractor says you know i can get a better deal somewhere else and they'll try to substitute something out and it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't have perform. perform yep great um same with about what we refer to as value engineering and you know if you're looking to expect the same performance but go a cheaper route um that doesn't always work out in your in everybody's favor mm -hmm. then installer has to work around unforeseen obstacles um you you know i'm sure every 
technician and every installer would like to get into a building before it's constructed and be able to set this up correctly. Unfortunately, that is not the it's case. Not the real world scenario. Unfortunately. Absolutely. Like so, where'd this plumbing line come from? This is not yeah. supposed to be here. Yeah. So, you know, we run into those issues where, you know, you, you need to account for the strange path that is taken. Yeah. Within within the system itself. And then lastly, installer quality issues. You have leaky ducts, incorrect wiring, you know, upside down louvers. I'm sure, you know, those out in the field, especially those on the service industry, they go out and they I'm sure they've seen many, many things that you just look at and it's like, wow, no wonder like this isn't performing. That's exactly right. So. Then last item, and this is something that, you know, I wanted to bring up so your your listeners are aware of, you know, any changes or, you know, requests that they get from tenants and users of these systems and of these products to let them know that there there may need to be a conversation with building owners, others, to make sure that performance, especially when we start talking to efi- towards efficiency. About efficiency side. Yep, that the right product is being used and whether or not we need to replace. So I will, I'll use an example where a tenant once expects needs more airflow. Um, no, through conversations, tech determines whether that, you know, an increase of 10% on speed will meet their needs. Now, we operate a lot of our, you know, on the fan laws. So the three fan laws I have up on the screen. So fan law number one, CFM varies directly with RPM, one to one mm-hmm. ratio there. Sure. Fan law number two, static pressure varies with the square of RPM. Then the last one, and the one that gets most people into trouble, is horsepower varies with the cube of RPM. Now, going to this example, and there's some quick math for you mm-hmm. up on up on the screen. And so the example has the fan operating at 1,000 RPM with, you know, air movement of 3,000 CFM, 0.5 inch water gauge, and half brake horsepower. So 10% increase, again, factoring in fan law, the first fan law, CFM varies directly with RPM. 10% increase in airflow is 10% a 10% increase in speed. So sure. makes sense, you know, you want the fan to blow more, you crank up the speed. Mm-hmm. Fan on number 2, when you crank up that speed on that, you are squaring the static pressure. So a 10% increase actually results in a 21% increase in static pressure for the system. This is the one that gets people in trouble without realizing exactly what they're doing to a system. This is a really good fan law for people to recognize, especially in our commercial and industrial applications. Absolutely. Then the last one, horsepower varies with the cube of RPM. So 33% increase. For a 10% increase in speed, you'll require 33% uh, increase in horsepower. Horsepower rating. Now... In the example of working with a relatively small fan and some small numbers, and I did that just to kind of illustrate. Sure. But when you start working on larger increases and they start asking for 25%, 50% increases, this needs to be factored in because you will kill the life expectancy or the life of the components that you're using when you either you need try to utilize your current equipment to meet the needs of the tenant. So it can absolutely shorten the life of the product. And the conversation needs to be had is whether or not you want to pay now or pay later at the end of the day, because if you try to accommodate them and crank up the speed, you will burn out the motor there will be service costs associated with this the fan might just might be catastrophic failure at the end of the day or you can pay now you can you can fit 
the system to meet their needs. And if you replace the system, you can have something that operates efficiently and can service, you know, at a much longer period of time than just trying to crank it up and simply increase the airflow based by increasing our RPMs. Yeah. Sure. Very interesting. Very good correlation. Yeah. So. Yeah, a lot of good stuff there, Charlie. You know, it really comes down to understanding the efficiency of equipment. You know, as we go forward looking at efficiency standards and regulations, we have to be aware that sometimes there is a decrease in efficiency when we're trying to manipulate a air source and to provide more airflow. Because say maybe we have a higher air uh, changeover requirement for a space. Mm -hmm. you know, what are we doing to the efficiency of that system when we're sacrificing that? So those are three really good fan laws to help show that differential. As we move forward, we'll start bringing in more details on how our new energy efficiency requirements are going to impact the technician directly and definitely into the residential side of it. Do we have any questions from anybody um, um, outside in the audience right now about anything that we've discussed today, any of the specifications for testing or any codes relating to our commercial and industrial side? Well, I think that's about it. Here All right. Are. Well, fantastic, oh. Charlie. Well, we really appreciate you joining us today and diving into some of the changes that are happening into our fan regulations and codes and expectations of the industry. And we look forward to seeing you all next week on Did You Know? The ESCO HVAC Show. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you for joining Did You Know? The ESCO HVAC Show. You want to see some of these great presenters in person? Well, then we'll see you at the National HVACR Educators Conference, where many of these guests will be presenting live classrooms, and you'll have a chance to interact with them. Would you like to watch this show again? Hey, no problem. Just head on over to YouTube to ESCO Institute. you have a topic that needs clarified about some kind of a change in the industry? Well, then let me know. See Beck at escogroup.org and we'll see what we can come up with.